am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. is enough more than I need and your word I will believe I wait for you draw near again let your spirit make me new and I will fall at your feet I will fall at your feet and I will worship you here I sing the verse again your grace is enough your grace is enough of more than I need Great is the love 
For each one of us, you gave your life, Lord, freely. That's because you are interested in each one of us here. You made us all in your image, all different from each other here, and you're interested in each one of us. And he wants to meet each of us here tonight. And he wants to minister to each of you here tonight. And just wait for a moment, just to soak in the love that God has for you. That he made you, he's interested in you, and he wants to be in relationship with you. And it's not something to be feared is this something to be embraced? So just soak in his love. Do stay standing, because this is a time now when we can uh, say hello to each other and uh, introduce yourselves. You might perhaps chat to someone you don't know. And uh, if you're not sure what to say, why don't you just ask them what they're going to be doing tomorrow? <laughs> what they're going to be doing? What are you going to be doing tomorrow? I think that's an opening gambit in your conversation. So just chat for a few moments. Well, if I can uh, bring you back to order and just uh, 
break into your conversations. I didn't realize how interested people's lives were and what fascinating things you're all doing tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> great buzz around the room. And uh, you'll be able to continue these chats afterwards over so a bit of food and refreshments afterwards. Um, we have a few notices just before Josh comes and speaks to us. Um, we have our Advent tea concert on the 26th of November here, um, celebrating winter turning into Christmas, and Noel Tredenick and musicians from the All Souls in Orchestra um, will be giving a lovely concert of sort of light music with refreshments and a little talk as well. Great thing to invite people to. Um, so Sunday the 26th of November at 3 p.m. Uh, this Friday at 11 o'clock, we have the funeral here of Ian Brocklesby. He's a, a long-standing member here, much-loved church member who was once a warden here. Um, he died recently, and his funeral is here at 11 o'clock this Friday. Um, all are welcome to come to that. There'll be refreshments in the jungle, and I think it's also being streamed online as well. And the service will be taken by Gavin Collins, who is the former um, vicar here, who is now the Bishop of Dorchester. And I also have some announcements to make, some official announcements to make about our church, church staff team. I'm really delighted to announce that Tim Butterworth is going to be joining us this Wednesday as our new children's pastor. And we're really thrilled about that. Give him a round of applause. Uh, Tim's coming down from Sunderland, where he currently attends uh, Ruth Barker, who some of you remember as our ministry trainee last year, and it's her home church and uh, Hope Vineyard. He's run his own business, he's been active in a wide range of ministries, and for the last two years he's helped out on Real Summer here as well. And we're really thrilled that he's joining us, and he has his first day, I think he comes down tomorrow to settle in, and then he's straight into it on Wednesday. And you might have spotted, as I said that, that his title is Children's Pastor and Not Children's Minister because we, after sort of consultation with the PCC and others, we're swapping the job titles around, so a number of the starting from minister to pastor. So Tim Coe is now a worship pastor, and Josh Sutton is now a youth pastor. Promotion. <laughs> and this um, change of job title, the reason for it is it sort of emphasizes our evangelical roots, helps to make our job titles consistent with other churches with a similar ministry focus across the UK. Uh, your, the one person who's not changing her job title is Tracy Brown. Um, she's our pastoral minister because it would be odd to call her pastoral pastor. <laughs> So I think she'll be relieved to know that she's still going to be pastoral minister. And Laura Joyner and Christine Brandon will continue as assistant pastoral ministers. And we're also very delighted that our children's minister, ex-children's minister, um, Brianna Holbrook, is going to be continuing to support our children's ministry as a consultant children's pastor up till December the 31st. We're really thrilled about that until... I think her pending baby will then call a halt of proceedings here working. But um, we're thrilled that Brianna's staying on till the end of the year. And we're also just to let you know that we have applied to a license for the British government for, to enable us to employ ministry trainees from overseas. We're hoping to hear around the beginning of, by the beginning of December on whether our license, about our license application. So, a lot of news there. Well, why don't we just pray for a moment for Tim Butterworth, our new children's pastor. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Tim. Thank you that you've brought him here. We thank you for the gifts that we know he's, that he's got. And we're really excited what a blessing he's going to be here. Just help him to settle in quickly and the move down from Sunderland to here, settle into his new home, settle into the, the church here, get to know everyone and settle into the staff team. And we just ask your blessing on him, on his move, and on his ministry here. Amen. We now come to our Bible reading, and tonight we're looking at Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, and you can find that on page 869 in the Bibles, page 869, and it's Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, and the story of Martha and Mary and Jesus' visits to their house. Page 869, Luke 10, 
starting at verse 38. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'd like to invite Josh Sutton, our new youth pastor. <laughs> now, hey. can I pray for you, Josh? Yes, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Josh. Thank you for all his gifts and all he does in the youth ministry. And we now thank you for the word that you've given him here this evening. May his word, he speak through you, Lord, and may your spirit anoint him. And may we be nourished by what he says. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Terence. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, yeah, I'm Josh. I am still technically the youth minister, soon to become youth pastor. Uh, I could put that there. Um, yeah, um, any weird noises that come out, please bear with me. I've got a bit of a sore throat at the moment. Um, and I don't know what drinking sounds like with a microphone, so you might find that out. Um, and a couple of coughs and, and sniffs. But yeah, uh, sorry about that in advance. Um, but yeah, so like Terence said, I'm here tonight to talk to you about uh, what we've just read from the Bible, Mary and Martha, um, hopefully bring you some, some thoughts and nuggets that you'll remember. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to tonight be talking to you uh, on the, the title is Seeking Jesus Amongst Distractions. Um, so for me personally, this story has been coming up a lot recently in a lot of things that I've been doing, whether it's been uh, with the youth or in my own quiet time or um, even being told that I've got to preach on it. Um, so to start with, I'm going to talk a bit about what I feel God's been teaching me in it, which will then hopefully help you as well. And then we'll go on to the, um, the part about Richard Foster's celebration of discipline. So we will also still be continuing with uh, the series that we've been looking at um, through his book. Um, so it'll come in two parts, first part being on distraction, and then the second part being on uh, the discipline of study. So let's start with some distraction. Um, I'm not going to distract you, hopefully. Um, my hands might do a bit of that, but hopefully not too much. Um, so there's, there's, I'm sure you're aware, there's many uh, distractions that can take you away from doing things, um, whether that be sitting on your phone at work, um, or even taking you away from your time, your quiet time with Jesus, trying to spend time with God. Um, whether it be in the case of Martha, um, chores and household um, stresses and hosting and things like that, or like I said, it could be your phone, or it could be work, or it can even be the people around you. Um, now, in this, Martha had the greatest thing, person, God, in front of her in the form of Jesus, um, and yet she was still distracted. She had the physical Jesus there, she was still distracted. Um, and Jesus was a friend to her and, Mar her and Mary, um, and yet she was still distracted by all that needed to be done. Um, she was stressing about it. She wasn't able to sit and just sit and rest with Jesus. In the same way, there can be many distractions in our lives that take us away from these things, take us away from Jesus, who wants to be with us and he wants to know us um, and build a relationship with us. Um, and we should come away from all these distractions just to be with him. So let's talk a bit about distractions. Um, I've already mentioned this one. I'm just going to have a sick drink. Um, I've already mentioned this one, phone. Um, phones can be a massive distraction. Um, I don't know about you, but I find that my phone is a massive distraction, particularly with social media, games, apps, stuff like that. Um, and when I was in school, um, so I went to sixth form. In sixth form, um, you have three periods, right? And uh, I spent a lot of my time on my phone um, because, yeah, what else was I going to do? Um, definitely not do work. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time on my phone. Um, but, yeah, I certainly know that social media can be a massive distraction. And um, I used to have an app called TikTok that some of you might have heard of, um, and it basically has millions of people, millions of videos on there between five seconds to a couple of minutes. Um, and I used to spend so long on there. But um, I 
got the urge to delete it, and that is no longer a distraction in my life. Um, and since then, my screen time, my phone tells me my screen time, um, it's, it's, it's got a lot better since then because I'm not endlessly scrolling through TikTok. Um, and I like to think that that has helped me spend more time in my Bible. Um, but yeah, I'll talk a bit about that a bit later. Um, and at the end of summer, I went to a One Life event, um, which for those of you who don't know, One Life is a Christian charity that aims to build up uh, leaders in all spheres of society, so not just at church, um, it can be in school, in where you work, whether it's in business or politics or um, yeah, anywhere you work. But basically we're, we had a talk on distraction, um, so it's been coming up a lot. Um, from Liz, who is the, um, what's the word, the director, um, and she was talking about distraction, and she said, she asked the question, who's in control of when you pick up your phone? Is it you? You're like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to scroll through, see, see what's happening. Or is it your phone? Oh, so-and-so sent me a video. Oh, that means I need to look at that video. Or so-and-so sent me a message. Oh, I need to look at that message. So who's in control? Is it you deciding when to pick it up? Or is it the notification, when the notification comes through? And if your phone is a massive distraction, um, like it is for me, it's important to limit the notifications and screen time and even delete apps if you need to. Um, so that you aren't distracted by those things. Because um, they, they can take you away from, from not only your friends and your family, but also, like I've said, your time that you spend with Jesus. Um, and something that was recommended to me by one of the old interns, uh, Adam, was um, to put your... When you, when you go to sleep in the night, if you charge your phone next to you, put your Bible on top of your phone, because then the first thing you pick up in the morning is your Bible. Now, whether or not that works and you just move your Bible so you can look at your phone, <laughs> who knows? But particularly for me, I've, been, I've, I've started to do that recently, and um, although I use my phone as my alarm, though it didn't work this morning, I still woke up half an hour late, um, I, I put my phone further away than my Bible, and then I pick up the Bible. And at the moment, I'm going through uh, 1 John, which I haven't read before, but it's quite interesting, so I'd recommend 1 John. Um, I thought, you know what, there's lots of Johns. Let's read one of the Johns. Anyway, I'm, I'm sidetracking slightly. Um, but yeah, so, I've, so put your Bible on top of your phone because then the first thing that you pick up is your Bible and not your phone. And the first thing you do, hopefully, is connect with God when you read the Bible. Um, and um, other distractions include work and people, and I'm going to touch very briefly on them because I've spoken a lot about phones. Um, but as I work with the youth, phones are a massive issue that we have with, well, not issue, but a massive thing that we have to battle with the youth, whether it's sometimes in youth groups, having to ask them to put their phones away, or at home, or in school, or whatever. Um, however, there are some good things that come out of that, because um, I was speaking to a, a parent of a young person that came to Real Summer, which is our annual youth, massive youth event that we have in summer. It's so much fun. But after Real Summer, they were like, I don't know what you've done, but my young person really wants to read the Bible. It's great. It was their birthday at the end of summer, and um, they asked for a Bible for their birthday, and apparently they've been making loads of annotations, loads of notes, reading their Bible loads, making it nice and colourful, but reading the Bible. So there's no phone involved in that because it's the physical Bible. And then another thing that happened a couple of weeks ago is we have a monthly worship night with the youth down in the village, um, and it was in between um, songs, the worship leader Santi, he was doing just allowing the spirit to do some, just to move. Um, and the young people just started singing out their own songs, started leading, and um, the Holy Spirit was really moving. And again, there were no phones there. Um, so yeah, work slash school, another distraction. So depending on what stage of life you're at, whether you're at work or whether you're still at school, or even if you're a student doing both, life can be busy. Um, yeah, I certainly know when I was at school, and even now at work, life's busy. Um, but yeah, whether it's working early in the morning, starting work early in the morning, or working late into the night, instead of um, getting some feeding from church or a small group, um, or even reading your Bible, um, it can be busy. And um, it's not enough just to, just to do church, just to do God stuff on a Sunday. So, um, like I said, you need to be making that time with, in, into your day to be able to spend time with God, to be able to read the Bible um, and things like that. Because we need to nourish our relationship with him throughout the week rather than just one, one day a week. Um, and me personally, 
Uh, I have been told that I burn the candle at both ends, and I'm sure many people out there do as well. Um, but the most important thing is not to let your work impact your time with God. It's important to still put in time, whether it's waking up a, a slightly bit earlier, not loads, not, not loads earlier, because I'm aware there's some people that do commuting and wake up ridiculously early that I can't even think about. Um, or um, maybe cutting down some, some uh, Netflix time or whatever in the evening to spend some more time um, to spend some more time in God, with, with God. Um, and something that, helps, that has helped me in the past is my commute's not actually that long to work. Um, it's not really called a commute, it's just a drive. Um, but um, in the morning, like I said, I, I've, I've been reading my Bible more. I wake up a bit earlier to read my Bible in front of my phone. Um, and then on my way to work, I am doing a Bible plan called Nikki called Bible in a Year with Nicky Gumbel. Um, and it's great because if you don't like reading stuff, he just reads it to you. So what I do is I, um, before I leave the house, I plug it in, in the aux in my car, and then he just speaks to me for the 10 minutes that it takes me to get to work. And he talks, goes through a whole devotional, um, and then you hear a bit of the Bible as well. Um, so whether that, so that might look different to you, it might look like maybe, like your phone can be used to read the Bible because there is a Bible app. And that's what I use. So whether, whether you don't want to take an actual physical Bible on the train with you if you're going to commute or whatever, um, but just making that time to spend some more time with God, whether it's praying um, when you wake up, reading a Bible when you wake up, or reading something on the way to church, uh, work uh, on the tube. But the commute is a great time to do that because hopefully you're not doing loads of work on the way to work. Um, but yeah, um, both the Bible and prayer are good ways to keep up your relationship and stay in contact with God. Now, there's a guy here who's not here tonight. But his name's Dan, and uh, he was telling me a story a couple of weeks ago of when he was on his commute uh, on the way or two, to or from work, I don't know. He was on the tube, and he was spending some time with God, and he felt the urge to, to pray for everyone on the tube. Right? That's not going around and saying, can I pray with you, can I pray with you? That's him sitting, spending time with God, and being like, Lord, I want you to bless this or... Or help this person with this, right? So the, the, the commute is a great place because I doubt you're having conversations with everyone around you. I know I certainly wouldn't be. Um, but yeah, prioritising these things shows God that you want to prioritise him. And, um, and any rewards that out of work that you're focusing on, you, you really want this thing, they're temporary, end of the world. And it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, to set your mind on the things that are above um, not the things that are on the earth. So you need to focus on God rather than the stuff that's going on in the world. So that's, that again talks about prioritising Jesus above anything else. Um, and then the third distraction that I'm going to talk about is people. Um, and at the start of the year uh, with the youth, we looked at the question, is it important who I spend my time with? Now when we started this, there was a, there was a big split between um, whether they thought that was the case or not. But the answer is yes, because if you spend a lot of time with someone, it's likely that you either share the same values and beliefs or will come to share the same values and, and beliefs as them. And that's why it's important to spend time with Christians and have Christian friends, um, whether that's in a small group or you have an accountability partner or just someone that you chat and read the Bible with, something like that. Um, and I'm not saying cut off any Christian friends because that's not what we're called to do. In Matthew, we're told to go and make disciples of all nations. And we do this by becoming with friends with non-Christians and acting as a light, like and like Jesus. But the only way that you know how Jesus acts and what he tells you to do is by reading the Bible. Um, by reading the Bible, spending time with him, and praying. But if you're spending all your time with people who are a bad influence or a distraction from faith or encourage you to do or believe things that you shouldn't be doing, then that's when it's important that you have good Christian friends and good accountability and good firm roots in the Bible so you know what you should be doing. Um, John Mark Comer, he is a, uh, an American pastor and author um, who's written a very good book, I'm told, on ruthless elim uh, elimination of hurry, which I'm supposed to have read, but I haven't. But I will. <laughs> I will at some point. Um, because I've been told it's a very good book. But anyway, he says, what you fill your mind with will shape the trajectory of your character. 
So my question to you is, are you filling your mind with distractions and all the wrong things and the things of the world by scrolling through social media or spending time with people you shouldn't be spending time with? Or are you filling your mind with the Bible and with Jesus and with prayer? And what you start and end your day with creates intimacy with that thing. So again, are you starting your day on your phone or doing a little bit of early morning work or other distractions? Or are you starting your day with Jesus in the Bible and with God in order to create an intimate relationship with him and for him to become the most important thing in our lives? And in this passage, Mary is a great example to us of how we should prioritise Jesus. She has literally come to the feet of Jesus. She wants him. She knows he is all she needs. She leaves all the distractions of housework and cleaning behind her. Whereas Martha only worries about her distractions and isn't focusing on Jesus. Now, Martha wanted to do the right thing, to serve and to please Jesus. But in this case, he pointed out in verse 42 that one thing is necessary, to spend time with him, his, their teacher. In this case, Jesus didn't care that the house wasn't clean. He just wanted to spend time with Mary and Martha. And it shows that you don't need to be perfect to come and be with Jesus. He will accept you as you are. You don't need to dress up or do anything special. You just need to come to him and seek him. And of course, I'm not saying don't clean, don't wash, don't work, don't be friends with people, don't serve. Just don't let it become more important than Jesus and then spending time with him. When he's right there, and he just wants you. Aim to want him too. Nothing should be more important than him. Just like nothing is more important to him than you. So seek Jesus in all you do, and prioritise spending time with him. He's there, and he wants you. Put away all the distractions that take you away from him. So, that's distractions. We'll now move on to, let's talk about study. Everyone's favourite thing, I'm sure. So, what is study? According to Richard Foster in his book, I've done a bit of reading, (laughs) study is a specific kind of experience in which through careful attention to reality, the mind is enabled to move in a certain direction. That's a lot. I'll read it again. Study is a specific kind of experience in which through careful attention to reality, the mind is enabled to move in a certain direction. It's a bit like training. The more you do something, the more you read something, the more you're told something, the more, you are, the more likely you are to believe, develop or follow or do that thing. And as mentioned before, John Mark Comer, the excellent author that I haven't read his book of, Uh, He said, what you fill your mind with will shape the trajectory of your character. And Richard Foster talks about study in a similar way. He says, the mind will always take an order, sorry, the mind will always take on an order conforming to the order upon which it concentrates. Again, I'll repeat that because it's a lot. The mind will always take on an order conforming to the order upon which it concentrates. Basically, what you focus on and will impact what your mind believes and follows, which then shapes the type of person you are. And that's why it's important to study things, to look deeply into things rather than just accepting them at face value. We need to look at what we've been told and try and figure out whether we should or shouldn't believe it. And there's a lot of things in society nowadays that they're trying to get you to believe one thing or another and trying to pull you away from one thing or another. But it's important to look into them ourselves and figure out whether we should or shouldn't believe it. And the Bible and the life of Jesus is a good place to start. Throughout the Gospels and the whole Bible, there is so much that we're told about what we should and shouldn't do. And this means that the Bible, the Bible, is our biggest source of information and where we should be studying from. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be looking at other sources. There are many people out there that have done lots of in-depth Um, study and um, learning about these things. But the Bible is a good place to start. And the term Bible study can come into it. And because it's not just a time to read the Bible, 
but to explore the deeper meaning and to try and figure out what God's trying to tell us through the Bible. And then how we can apply that to our lives as well. And in the story of Mary and Martha, Mary is the perfect student. She was at the feet of Jesus, her rabbi slash teacher, and just wanted to listen to him, to learn from him, because she knew that he had all the knowledge that she wanted. Mary was being a good example to both us and Martha about how we should study. We should be pursuing and going after what we want to learn about and who we want to learn it from. And we're going to start a mentoring program with the youth um, because they know that there's lots to learn and they know that um, there are other people that can tell, us, tell them about all the things that they, can, they need to learn through life experience and wisdom and things like that. And we've all got things to learn, no matter what the age, what age we are. And we've all learned things as well, whether that was in school or at uni or work, friends or at church, um, stuff like that. But there's still so much to learn. And Mary knew exactly who she should seek to do all that. Through all this, she was seeking Jesus. There's that famous saying, you learn something new every day. And this can come into studying because you obviously learn new things that you can then input into your life. The more you look at something, the more you'll learn. Right? And in this passage, although it doesn't really talk about why Jesus was with Mary and Martha... I'm sure Mary and Martha eventually both learnt so much from Jesus, so much more than just what's in this passage. Just like we can learn so much more from this passage and from the course of Jesus' life and the Bible as a whole. Let's look at verse 39. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. I just want to highlight a little bit. Who sat at the Lord's feet. She knew where the fountain of knowledge was. She knew where she could learn. She knew where she could study. And she chose to seek Jesus because that was what she needed. And although we don't have direct access to the physical Jesus, um, I don't know why I did that, um, like Mary did, we do still have access to him. We do still have access to him through prayer, to him through the Bible, because he does still speak today. Um, yeah, Jesus still speaks today. And we, and we can be like Mary. We, can be, we, we need to be coming to him to learn. And we do this by reading the Bible and sitting in it. Not just reading it briefly, but reading and sitting and praying about what is trying to get told to us. And then I just want to talk about the second part of that verse that I read. Listen to his teaching. Um, Mary took in what Jesus was saying and this is why it's important to read the Bible don't just rely on the sermon on a Sunday um, to be your study whilst it can be a good thing to do um, at the time it shouldn't be the only time that you do it um, my challenge to you this week is to seek Jesus and if you don't already read your Bible um, I want to I challenge you to read your Bible more than you normally would um, Find time, whether it's during a lunch break or on a commute or waking up slightly earlier or cutting back on a bit of Netflix time, like I said earlier. Um, but seek to study the word and then through that you'll be seeking Jesus. And it says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, I've taken this from the NIV, so it's different to the ones in front of you. I'm sorry. Um, but it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. It's talking about, the more, it's talking about you need to read your Bible loads, basically. The more you read your Bible, the more you deepen your relationship with Jesus, and the more you learn about him, and the better your relationship gets. Also, the more he will reward you with success, just as it said in the verse at the end. But don't just read the Bible and study it to gain success, because that's selfish. Do it to deepen your relationship with Jesus. And then you will learn more about him. He'll know your true motive behind start reading the Bible anyway. Um, so read the Bible, seek wisdom, seek him. Don't seek success. 
So before we just reflect with a couple of questions, I'm just going to very quickly summarise a couple of points that, um, that I think are quite important to relatively short, simple things. That if you haven't learned anything of this time, in, this, in this last 20 minutes or so, I hope you'll remember these things. The first thing is about distraction. Jesus is there and he wants you. He just wants you. So put down your distractions. Um, he doesn't want anything in the world, so put down these distractions. If you need to get help and accountability to, be a- accountability to be able to read your Bible more or pray more, then do it. And spend time with Jesus because he's right there and he just wants you. And then the second, second half... Study. Study the Bible as a way to connect with Jesus. As I said before, he is there. Be like Mary who put down everything and wanted to just seek Jesus and to learn from him, to learn from his wisdom and study what he talks about. And then let's take a moment. Aha, questions. Let's take a moment to, I've got some reflection questions um, for you just to ponder before the band comes out to lead us in response. Um, so yeah, what distractions are getting in the way of you and Jesus? And what are you going to do about these distractions? And the second question, are you more like Mary or more like Martha? Do you rush around or do you come to the feet of Jesus? If you're more like Mary, how can you, if you're more like Martha, how can you be like Mary? And then at the bottom, it's my little challenge to you for this week. I won't be checking up on it next week, don't worry. Um, But yeah, seek Jesus in all you do. Put in intentional time to spend time with him or to read your Bible. And if you read your Bible once a week, and I want you to read it three times this week. If you read your Bible three times this week, I want you to read it five times this week. If you you read your Bible five times this week, I want you to, normal, normally, I want you to read it seven times this week. If you read it seven times in a week, read it more. (laughs) <clears throat> but yeah so um, I'll leave those questions up and I'll pray before um, we let the band but there'll be some time between me praying and the band for, for you to have a think about those questions so yeah Heavenly Father I thank you for the great gift that, that the Bible is and I thank you that through it we're able to, to deepen our relationship with you, to get to know you more. And yeah, I just pray that this week you'll prompt us to, to seek you more in everything we do. I pray that you'll help us and guide us to implement more time to spend with you, to read your Bible. And yeah, I pray that where we need help putting away distractions, You'll provide that help for us. I just pray that you'll help us to remove any distractions. Amen. As we, oh wow, I'm very loud, even for me. Um, as we come in to respond, um, we're just going to take a couple minutes to reflect on what Josh has said. Josh um, would like me and Sean to play for a little while. So we're going to have some musical background just for you to, to speak to the Lord, speak to God. You might just want to pray and invite the Holy Spirit to really maybe highlight something from what Josh has said. Um, is particularly for you this week. Um, And after that, we're going to respond with a song that we've sung a few times. The lyrics will be on, and you're free to engage however you like, sitting, standing, um, but just you're welcome to worship the Lord. Holy Spirit, as we just rest in your presence for a minute, we 
pray you might come and speak to us now. Lord, we open our hearts to you. Lord Jesus, will you teach us this week and for the rest of our lives what it means to abide in you, Lord, to rest in your presence daily, Lord, Lord, to seek your face and your will and your voice in your word, Lord, you are our one desire. But in our busy lives, Lord, our disordered and sometimes chaotic lives, God, we pray you might come and bring order by your spirit, Lord, that you might be glorified and magnified as the center, as the source, Lord, as the goal of all of our lives, Lord, to be with you bring you glory, Lord, to be even transformed into your likeness. Lord, this is our prayer. And we surrender again to you and your spirit and your commands in our lives. Amen. We're going to sing a song. It's really simple. We've sung it a few times before. It's called Nothing Else. If you don't know it, that's fine. You can just listen to it, let it wash over you. You might even want to listen to it this week as a song to lead you into Jesus' presence. Um, but feel free to stand or sit. We'll sing. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessing. You don't owe me anything oh, More than anything that you can do I just want you I'm sorry, Lord 
And I'm sorry When I've just gone through the motions I'm sorry When I just sang another song Oh, take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you Sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Oh, take me back to where we started. And I open up my heart to you. I'm caught. I'm caught up in your presence oh, I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave No
this draws our service to a close. Uh, just to say, when Joss was speaking a lot, obviously, about encouraging us to read our Bible, if, if you don't have a Bible and uh, you'd like one, then do just chat to me afterwards because I'm sure we, can f- give, we will happily give you a Bible. Um, if there's anything that you'd like prayer for that's come up in Josh's talk or anything else, then there'll be someone available at the back of the church in the Fonterra who would love to pray with you. Or if you feel more comfortable, just pray with someone you know in, in, the, in the chairs. And uh, there's food available outside, so do continue the conversations we were having um, earlier on. And, but if you just like to, to, to keep worshipping, the band will keep playing for a, a, a song or two as well. If you'd like to stay in here. Well, thank you so much for coming, whether you're here in person or online, and have a blessed week. Amen.